So why then should we bother about altars when we are told that there is nothing more against us, um, it has been cancelled, the written code against us, all these regulations of the Old Testament have been cancelled, so now we should just live a merry and happy life. Why then should we bother about altars? Let me tell you today why we should bother about ancestral altars and witchcraft altars. After, uh, we tell last week also that as, in fact, last week but one, that as God was teaching the spiritual law of altars and the fact that a man has to raise an altar in order to communicate with God, Satan was watching keenly. He was watching keenly. We have an enemy called Satan who has studied the spiritual laws of altars and uses these laws against us to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So if we lack knowledge concerning these altars, Satan does not lack that knowledge. He does not lack that knowledge. So we need to understand that Satan is after generations, not just after individuals. When you see him attacking constantly an individual, he knows that he can get generations from that one individual. Okay? So he will look for the sin that will bring the most damage. He look for the sin that will bring the most da damage. And Satan knows the word enough to know that it is the sin of worshipping directly that will give him four generations. So it is a sin that he wants people to commit. Because he knows if we commit that sin, four generations, he can go to sleep now. Four generations are all his now to do with as he pleases, to attack, to steal, to kill and destroy them. So this is why ancestral altars are of great interest to Satan. They are of great interest to Satan. He knows, according to Exodus chapter 20, verses 3 to 5, which we will not read together, which tells us that if we worship another God, punishment will come on us, on our children, on our grandchildren, and on our great-grandchildren. So why should Satan even bother with other sins? When this one sin will ensure that for four generations, he can attack people. So if your great-grandparents made covenants with him at shrines, where they raised demonic altars, through blood sacrifices, then their children, their grandchildren, their, and their great-grandchildren are under the control of Satan. What about if it is your grandparents who worship Satan? Then your grandparents, your parents, you, and your children are all under his control. So if your parents worshipped other God, you saw them, and there are a lot of people tell me, yes, I used to see my father and mother, they even brought somebody to come and pray, and they even killed things in our compound. They even buried things in our compound. They took a chicken, and we sat in a circle. They were going around like this with that chicken. Okay? If your parents worshipped Satan, then your parents, you, your grandchildren, and your great-grandchildren are under his control in a very hidden manner. In a very hidden manner. We've already said that generation, the word generation, can be divided into two words. Gene, what is in your bloodline? Your gene and ration, which means what is rationed into your bloodline? Generation, okay? So something is rationed into our bloodline. Why should Satan seek to control one person when he can control four? And when that generation is dying off, because you say, oh, then that is fine. There will just be four generations, and after that, you know, the fifth generation can now live for Christ. Yes, but listen to what Satan does. He makes sure that the fourth generation gives him four generations through their sins. Then he makes sure that the third generation, through idolatry also, gives him another four generations. Then he makes sure that the second generation, through their idolatry, gives him another four generations. Then he makes sure that you and I, through our own idolatry, we give him another four generations. And so it is perpetrated 
generation after generation after generation until someone challenges, stands up, and challenges those demonic altars, pulls them down, and raises a proper kind of altar through the cross of Calvary and the sacrifice of the blood of Jesus to silence the speaking of the ancestral altars. They will continue to speak generation after generation, generation after generation. And what will they be speaking? These ancestral altars will be speaking poverty, they'll be speaking lack, they'll be speaking struggling, they'll be speaking sickness and early death and mental illness and no marriage and broken marriage and separation and divorce and unemployment and no promotion and stagnation, fear, the list goes on and on and on, generation after generation. And it is for this reason that God, when he spoke to Gideon in Judges chapter 6, which we have read here, Judges chapter 6 and verses 24 to 26, when uh, Gideon went and raised an altar to God. God met him, and remember, whenever, whenever we meet with God, that is where we raise our altar. So Gideon met with God, and he raised an altar, and he was very happy about his altar. But we are told that same night, God came to him and told him, tear down your father's altar to Baal. Tear down your father's altar to Baal. It is going to be fighting the altar that you're trying to raise. The altar of Baal that your father raised is still speaking over this community. It's speaking over this community, speaking over this family. And once you pull down your father's altar to Baal, then build a proper kind of altar to the Lord your God. 